All right, so I got a package today in the mail, and uh, we're going to open it up. Actually, I've cut it open. Let's see what we got in here. <clears throat> I've been talking back and forth to um, to WearTac, and we were talking about bifaces and thinness of bifaces, and so he sent me a couple of things that he uh, he napped out. One here. Oh yeah. Oh cool. There's a little something here. Yeah, I think that's it. Oh, I see something else. Hold on. Oh, something here. Okay. I think that's it. Yep. Lots of pink fluff. <laughs> All right. So let me open these up, and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, we'll check these out. This is what WearTac sent me um, through our di dialogue. He and I were <clears throat> talking about bifaces and um, getting them thin, either from a spall, working down the. either from a spall or working down the, the, the piece from a slab and um, I didn't expect this piece we were primarily talking about this piece over here on my right he sent this piece also here on the left and then this piece here made out of some beautiful material but we're talking about how thin these are and um, <clears throat> you do a ratio of how th how thick it is on the the thickest spot. You measure it, and then you divide it by the widest spot, and that's your um, width the thick width to thickness ratio. And generally, if you get something close to a ten to one, you're pretty you're doing a pretty darn good job. I have yet to even get that far, but. These are, are definitely, um, you know, a really nice and thin uh, examples of, of, uh, of a, um, a good width to thickness ratio. Now, I'm not going to go into getting the caliper and figuring it out right now, but I just wanted to show these off here a little bit. And these are obsidian here. Practically see right through them beautiful pieces of obsidian. I mean you can practically see my hand right behind it. Now this is another example. See you know that you're doing pretty good and your your piece is pretty thin when, you're, when your flakes start terminating in the middle and start making a little bit of a hinge right there in the middle and you realize that yeah these are getting pretty flat because <clears throat> the flake isn't traveling as far because there isn't that much convexity anymore. But nice big flake pattern. See those flake patterns? Nice big flakes. Really thin. Great example. Great example. Now here's a monster here. Um, yeah, this piece, you know. Is bigger, bigger in my hand, practically. Another piece of uh, obsidian, some fire mahogany obsidian. The black part is where the uh, the edges are more translucent. I know I'm kind of shining into the sun, so it's kind of hard to see it. But yeah, there's definitely translucency there. Yeah, you can practically see my finger right behind the rest of it there anyhow this is another example of a great great uh, uh, a thin piece with big flake scars especially this one here where my thumb is it's huge 
So thank you very much. I really appreciate this. These are definitely, I'm going to use these for study pieces. Um, just kind of, uh, you know, looking over them and, and see if I can't uh, <clears throat> emulate or, or, or use as an example for um, my own my own napping abilities, which, uh, you know, um, I'm only about a year, a little over a year into napping now, and, um, you know, I have a long ways to go. I'll show you a couple of things that I've made here. First off, I made this little spear point here. And you can tell that it's, it's still kind of thick. The uh, width to thickness ratio is about 2.5 to 1. So I measured that thickest area, like I explained earlier, and then um, measured the width and then divided the two. But, um, you know, this, this, this is still an effective tool. It's a nice knife. Um, I'll probably haft it one of these days, but, um, you know, this is definitely a, a, a good tool that um, that would be used out in the field, you know, <laughs> by, by a, you know, a native. So I got that one there. Let me move back a little bit. Then I have this one here that I made. And this is a full 10 inches exactly. And this is a spear point. Um, or a large knife, dagger, what have you. But the width to thickness ratio is much thicker on this. This is about 2.2 to 1. And I was really having a hard time thinning out um, thinning this thing out. Um, there's a little uh, cortex left on there. Um, I have a hairline crack going in here because of the the obsidian itself. It's just a um, it's not a good quality obsidian, and so I was really having a hard time trying to flake this out um, without without having some major issues here. But you know, it's actually the biggest. Uh, blade, biggest dagger I've ever made. Ten inches is huge for me, huge. Um, so this is my first uh, example of a successful ten inch, um, rather than a uh, single digit. I got I got double digits now. <laughs> so um, yeah, so this is this these two pieces here are my latest nappings. Um, you know, like I said, I have a long ways to go to get to get that thin, and then I have a long ways to go to even get, uh, you know, like old, old uh, Paleo Man 52, he's, he's just an outstanding napper that, um, uh, you know, he, he could be up there with those with those guys like Ted Orcutt, or, um, uh, you know, he's, he's definitely up there with Jim Wynn, Jim Wynn has all kinds of, of points and things that he's made, um, and examples and whatnot. And all the other great nappers out there, which uh, uh, have slipped my mind at the moment. But anyhow, this is uh, this is what I have going on right now. Um, this is where I'm at in my napping skills and ability. And um, thank you for my new subscribers who, who have subscribed lately. I certainly appreciate it. You guys have a good week and um, stay tuned.